Hi guys, it's Nicole and today I am sharing my take on sketch number six from the 6x6 paper pad sketches for one page layouts. Um, I am pretty far behind as far as the Facebook group goes where, you know, every Monday Allison posts her sample, all the extra PDFs, all that kind of stuff. I am way behind. I'm okay with it. I don't feel like I absolutely have to be caught up. <laughs> I'll get there eventually. I will definitely share my progress with you guys. Um, for number six, I just have a couple photos of my daughter for her birthday this year. Not this year that just happened. Whatever year these photos are from, I can't think off the top of my head. I want to say it's 2019. Uh, I updated some decor stuff in her room. So like I got her a new big like area rug. We hung some stuff from the ceiling to kind of bring some color in. Added some more pillows to her bed. Some like mermaid and like sea urchin looking like wall stuff. And just kind of updated her room a little less like little girly. So... I'm just kind of using the colors for that and the birthday theme to pick out my papers. Most of the papers are going to come from the Magical Birthday line from Simple Stories. I used this 6x8 pad in one of the sketches. Like I, I like to break them up into groups of five. I feel less overwhelmed that way. Um, so I want to say it was... I, I can't think of what number it was, but it was the one that had like a nine squared grid. I'll post a link up here in the eye and in case you missed that one, same same paper, same kind of birthday idea, two completely different sketches so it's kind of fun to see the same supplies just kind of switched. So I went through and just kind of cut everything into one inch strips and tried to figure out a method of arranging pattern paper for whatever reason and I've said this before pattern paper is my favorite supply but a lot of times trying to either pick the patterns or figure out what order I want them to be especially when there's gonna be a lot of them I kind of struggle with so knowing that my go-to is usually to put them in rainbow order and for this layout, it actually worked out really good because I think if you asked my daughter what her favorite color was and rainbow was an option, she would pick it. So once I kind of figure out which order I want it to go in, I did go ahead and just take a picture on my phone because I knew that in all likelihood, I was not going to be able to sit down and finish this layout start to finish in kind of one go. Turns out I was right. I ended up kind of having to come and go in between house stuff and just kind of other things that I have been trying to catch up on around here since being sick and school starting back up just kind of you think oh they're going to be at school you're going to have all this extra time no <laughs> other things kind of come up and it, I feel like I blink and it's three o'clock already and I need to go pick them up so I'm trying to carve out kind of like separate times to do like house stuff and if I need to go run errands or try to talk myself into going to the gym like something for me also trying to kind of schedule time in here to be able to edit get stuff kind of cleaned up get layouts made and I feel like my biggest problem right now is I have it's like my brain is mentally creative, like my brain is coming up with all kinds of ideas and all kinds of things that I want to accomplish, but time is not there, and I don't know. So I have a lot of just like post-it notes literally stuck to the wall of like reminders to myself of this is something that I want to get to. Um, at this point, I do have like a scratch sheet of cardstock that I'm, I've just pulled up. That I just put down temporarily to use it as like an edge to butt those strips up against because originally I thought I was going to do like Allison showed in her sketch and in her sample where there was no border, no strip of paper down there. 
And if I left it up to myself to eyeball it and try to line all those up, they would not be straight. So just like a quick trick is to just grab some scratch cardstock, put like two little two little dots of like tape adhesive and use it and literally like push your pattern paper against the edge of it and they'll all be lined up. However, I'm going to end up covering up mine because I couldn't not put a border there. I don't like it just it felt unfinished to me. And so typically things like that is when I'll go ahead and like make changes to a sketch or something when I know that that's basically like my inner personal style screaming like, hey, we needs a border strip right there. We needs it. Like, I'm going to keep tapping on your brain until you put it there. So that's kind of when I say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to make some modifications to make this work for me. So, and I do kind of want to touch on, and I've touched on this before where a lot of times if I take a big break, which in this instance was a couple weeks, I took a couple weeks off, wasn't really up here doing anything. I kind of lose the creative spark. It's not that I don't want to come up here and make layouts. It's like I just, nothing's, nothing feels right. Nothing's, I don't know. So usually the first layout back is kind of the, the struggle for me. So I've learned over the years of doing like these big classes or these big like working through a sketchbook with a group of people or something even like series on my channel. Um, I've learned that I know that it's going to happen and I just kind of find solutions that work for me to get through it. And usually it's just forcing myself to get the layout done and done to a certain extent that I'm happy with the end result. And typically it's going to be this part of the process where I start being like, oh, I'd rather just walk away. Like, I'd rather go clean my kitchen or go fold laundry. Like, I'd rather go do anything but embellish this layout. So because this is kind of like a repeating pattern in my personal process, I know that it's better for me to just kind of keep things simple, keep things basic and not every layout is going to be this like super full, maybe like dynamic scene going on with tons of stitching or tons of die cuts and stuff like that. Sometimes I need to just move myself through the process. Sometimes the process happens and it's almost like it's a train and I'm on it and the train is going and everything's great. Sometimes when I come back from break, I am at the back and I'm pushing that train. And the only thing that kind of gets me through it is, is literally just telling myself to sit here, get through it. The next one, you'll start to feel more creative. The next one after that, you'll start to feel more creative. And it's definitely kind of, I don't know. It's just something that I have learned throughout these processes. And I will say that sketch number six and sketch number seven, I actually worked kind of tandem, like almost at the same time, because they had a lot of cutting strips and a lot of the same type of things like straight line stitching. So a lot of my process with the two of them, I would do like the papers, go to the next one, do the papers on that one, go back to number six and deal with my photos, go back to number seven. Like I was kind of bouncing around between. And then that way I pretty much had finished layouts and I could go do the journaling for both of them at the same time and kind of any finishing things, date stamps, um, tiny embellishments, anything like that I could kind of do at the same time as well. So like I said, this is the part that I don't really enjoy. I know a lot of people, this is like their favorite part. For me, if I don't have like a distinct picture in my mind of what I want the layout to look like, it just feels a lot like I'm just pushing things around, hoping that they'll basically tell me, yes, this is where I want to live. 
so that's when I kind of stop myself and say, okay, don't, don't force it. Like at this point I'm over here, like trying to add more. I'm like, no, keep it simple. Just keep it basic. Keep it simple. Keep the focus on the photos. Keep the focus on the journaling information and just kind of have a done layout is I guess where I'm going with that. Because like I said, there's going to be some times where if I'm feeling super creative, yeah, I'll take a week to work on a layout that has like all kinds of interesting things on it, all kinds of stuff going on. But almost every time when I take a break and I come back, I know that the layout that I'm going to make is going to be kind of simple and it works for me. I just kind of move on and like six and seven, I would say, because I worked on them at the same time, they're both kind of the same level. Like they're, they're done. The memory's documented. The funny thing is they're both from the same day, two completely different events. Um, but they're both just kind of more, I would say muted, more simple, more kind of basic things going on. When I got to eight, I was feeling more creative. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do some die cutting. Um, took me three days to stitch on it. Like that kind of thing. So it was like, I was getting more, I want to do this or more. Oh, I need to go look for this or, oh, I want to add this. It's kind of like, you know, when you see those people like pulling a bus, it starts out really slow. And then as they get momentum going, it, it goes a little faster. So kind of hoping that if I don't take a break right now, the, the creative spark will kind of stay. And I was actually kind of surprised on the poll that I posted, I thought for sure that this layout, the six by six class would kind of end up being like the highest voted. And for a while there it was. And then a bunch of people voted for creating for collections. And I can't even get to it right now. <laughs> like, I think I have one more photo collage that's like printed. So I'm kind of hoping to get to that. Unfortunately, I don't know when I'm going to be able to post it. So it's probably going to be six by six layouts for a little bit. And I don't even know at this point. I have a couple videos for the scrap room that I want to put up. Kind of um, more like in depth in my thought process with the kits. Because I get a lot of questions on them. So it's one of those things where it's like I might have to just stop do like a layout share and talk my way through them, but we'll see. At this point, I'm kind of surprised that I've made it almost 13 minutes into a voiceover and I still kind of have a voice, but anyways, I appreciate you guys for kind of always allowing me to disappear for a while and come back and you guys are always still so, still so supportive and I definitely, big hugs, big thanks for that. Um, I will probably be back with sketches seven and eight later this week. And until then, I will catch you guys later.